Have you ever wondered why you can't hear a scream in space even in your worst nightmares? Well, let's delve into the fascinating world of sound to find out. Sound, you see, is like the ultimate social butterfly. It just can't exist without a crowd or in scientific terms a medium. Be it air, water or solid objects, sound needs something to travel through. It's like trying to do the wave at a football game when you're the only one in the stands. It's just not going to happen. Now think about those epic space battles in movies, where explosions are loud and clear. In reality, space being a vacuum, there's nothing for the sound to travel through, so it would be as quiet as a library on a Saturday morning. That's right, sound needs something to travel through, and that's our first clue to understanding its properties. Imagine you're a sound wave, setting off from a vibrating object. Picture this. You're born from a strummed guitar string, a slammed door, or a shouted word. You begin life as a tiny vibration, a back-and-forth motion that jostles the air molecules around you. This starts a chain reaction, with each molecule passing the vibration onto its neighbor, like a game of microscopic tag. This domino effect is what we call a sound wave. As you travel, you'll notice that you're not moving through empty space. No, you're surfing through a medium, be it air, water, or even a solid like wood or metal. And you're not just meandering along, you're racing at incredible speeds. In air, you're zipping along at around 760 miles per hour. In water, you're even speedier, clocking in at over 3,000 miles per hour. And in steel, you're practically a speed demon, hurtling along at 13,000 miles per hour. Now, depending on the medium, your journey can take an interesting turn. If you encounter something soft and porous, like a sponge or a thick carpet, you might find yourself getting absorbed, your energy dissipating into the material. On the other hand, if you run into a hard smooth surface, like a mirror or a marble wall, you're likely to bounce back, creating an echo. But your ultimate destination, that's someone's ear. You'll enter the ear canal and hit the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. These vibrations are then converted into electrical signals by tiny hair cells in the inner ear. These signals are sent to the brain, which interprets them as sound. So, even though you started as a simple vibration, in the end, you become part of a melody, a conversation, or a symphony of city sounds. You bring joy, convey emotions, and connect people. And just like that, you've made your way from a simple vibration to someone's ear. Quite an adventure, isn't it? Now, who doesn't love a good echo in a cavernous space? It's like nature's own version of a sound system, isn't it? But have you ever wondered what's really happening when your voice bounces back at you from a distant wall? Let's delve into the wonderful world of echoes. Imagine you're in a vast empty hall and you decide to shout out hello. What you're hearing when your hello bounces back is an echo. But what exactly is an echo? Well, it's all about reflection and absorption, two key properties of sound. When you shout hello, you're sending out a sound wave. This sound wave travels through the air until it hits a surface. A part of this sound wave gets absorbed by the surface and a part gets reflected back. Here's where it gets interesting. If the surface is far enough and there's little to no other noise around, you'll hear the reflected sound wave. That, my friend, is your echo. Quite nifty, isn't it? Now, not all surfaces are created equal when it comes to reflecting sound. Some surfaces are better at absorbing sound than reflecting it. Think of a fluffy rug versus a smooth, hard wall. The rug is going to absorb a lot more sound so you won't hear an echo. The wall, on the other hand, will reflect the sound, creating that echo we all find so fascinating. And what about those times when you hear multiple echoes? That's called a reverberation. It happens when the sound wave gets reflected multiple times before reaching your ears. It's like the sound is playing a game of pinball, bouncing off walls and objects before finally getting back to you. So there you have it. That's the science behind echoes. It's all about how sound waves interact with their environment and how our ears perceive those interactions. It's a beautiful dance of physics and biology, all happening in the blink of an eye. Or should I say the flick of an eardrum? So remember, the next time you hear an echo, it's just sound taking a detour. Did you know that sound can be a chameleon? Yes, it can change its color. Well, in a manner of speaking. Just like our friendly reptilian friends who change their colors based on their environment, sound too can change its color or characteristics when it interacts with different materials or objects. This is an interesting phenomenon that shows how versatile and adaptable sound really is. Imagine throwing a pebble into a pond. The ripples created are similar to how sound waves spread out when they are created. Now, 
If the pond was filled with honey instead of water, the ripples would behave differently, wouldn't they? They'd move slower and spread out less. Similarly, when sound waves pass through different mediums, their speed and spread can change. Sound can travel through solids, liquids, and gases, but not all materials are created equal when it comes to conducting sound. In general, sound travels fastest in solids, slower in liquids, and slowest in gases. This is because particles are closer together in solids, making it easier for the sound wave to travel. But that's not all. Sound can also be absorbed or reflected by the objects it encounters. Think of an echo, that sound being reflected back to you. On the other hand, if you've ever noticed how much quieter things are when you're in a room with a lot of soft furnishings, that's because those materials are absorbing the sound. And just like a chameleon can change its color based on its mood or surroundings, sound can also be modified or changed. Musicians do this all the time when they adjust the pitch, volume or tone of their instruments. In fact, in the world of music and audio production, there are countless ways to modify sound, from simple adjustments like volume and pitch control, to more complex manipulations like equalization and reverb. So the next time you listen to your favorite song, or even the everyday sounds around you, remember the sound chameleon. It's a reminder that sound isn't just about what we hear, it's about how it travels, how it interacts with the world around it, and how it can change. So, sound isn't just a one-note wonder, it's a whole symphony of possibilities. Now, we've talked a lot about sound, but how do we actually hear it? I hear you ask. Well, let's dive right in. Our ears are remarkable sensory organs that convert sound waves into signals that our brain can understand. It's a bit like a translator, converting foreign language into something we can comprehend. The outer part of our ear, known as the pinna, catches sound waves and funnels them into the ear canal. These waves then hit the eardrum, a thin membrane that vibrates like a drum when struck by sound waves. The eardrum's vibrations are picked up by three tiny bones in the middle ear. These bones amplify the vibrations and send them into the cochlea, a snail-shaped structure filled with fluid and tiny hair cells. As the fluid in the cochlea vibrates, it causes the hair cells to move. These movements generate electrical signals that are sent via the auditory nerve to the brain, which interprets them as sound. So when your favorite song comes on, it's your ears that are doing the hard work to let you enjoy the beat. But what about when our ears need a little help? That's where technology comes in. Devices like hearing aids can amplify sound, making it easier for people with hearing loss to perceive. They use a microphone to capture sound, a processor to amplify the relevant frequencies, and a speaker to deliver the sound into the ear. Microphones, like the one you might use at a karaoke night, work in a similar way. They capture sound waves in the air and convert them into electrical signals that can be amplified, recorded, or broadcast. And let's not forget about ultrasound devices, which use sound waves at frequencies higher than our ears can detect. These devices are used in everything from medical imaging to navigation systems for bats and dolphins. So thanks to our ears and a bit of technology, we can enjoy everything from Beethoven to the Beatles. Now let's take a stroll down memory lane and revisit the sound journey we've been on. Our journey started by exploring the fascinating properties of sound. We learned that sound isn't just something we hear, it's a form of energy that travels through a medium as waves. But remember, it doesn't have to be air. It can be water, a wall, or even a spoon. It's like the ultimate hitchhiker. Then we delved into the journey of a sound wave. We discovered how these waves, caused by vibrations, travel from the source to our ears. It's like an invisible highway of sound, streaming right past us. And just like a rock star, these sound waves love to make a grand entrance, entering our ears and making the eardrums vibrate. Next, we met the incredible Echo. We learned how sound can bounce off objects and come back to us like a boomerang. It's not just a cool trick in a canyon or an empty hall, it's a fundamental property of sound. We also turned our attention to the sound chameleon, showing how sound can be absorbed, reflected, and even modified. Different materials interact with sound in unique ways. Some absorb it, like a sponge soaking up water, while others reflect it, like a mirror bouncing back light. And some can even change the sound, giving it a whole new character. Finally, we explored the sensory organs and devices that detect sound. We learned about our amazing ears, which are like super sensitive sound detectors. And we looked at devices, from microphones to sonar systems, that make use of sound's properties in ingenious ways. So there you have it, the wonderful world of sound, all in 15 minutes. Before we sound off, 
Here's a fun fact to impress your friends. Did you know that the speed of sound is not constant? It changes depending on the medium it travels through. In air, sound travels at about 762 miles per hour. That's faster than a cheetah, but not as fast as the speed of light, which is nearly 670 million miles per hour. Now imagine this, sound travels faster in water and even faster in steel. Quite the speedy traveler, isn't it? This goes to show just how versatile and fascinating the world of sound truly is. And remember, whether you're tapping on a drum, strumming a guitar, or simply speaking to a friend, you're creating sound waves and contributing to this extraordinary universe of sound. Remember, the world of sound is full of surprises, so keep exploring and keep listening.